Welcome to this video tutorial IBM Tivoli Flash Copy Manager for VMware 411 failover scenario using XRV remote mirroring. In this tutorial I will show you how to set up and use FCM to protect against the disaster in your VMware environment and failover to a second data center to restore virtual machines. This tutorial assumes that the audience is familiar with the FCM installation process since a full installation is a prerequisite to reproduce the steps shown in this video. Let's get started by taking a look at the environment setup used in this tutorial. We have a primary site and a secondary site with similar configurations. Both sites have dedicated installation of the FCM vStorage backup server with IP connections to one of the XIV storage devices. Both XIV storage devices are connected to each other over IP to be able to establish remote mirror relations between their volumes. There is also a vCenter server with one or multiple ESX hosts on each side that manage the data stores and virtual machines. The storage for the data stores is allocated on the XIV storage device on the primary side and replicated to the XIV on the secondary side. This picture also shows that the FCM repository and Derby database is placed on a replicated volumes. That is highly recommended to be also protected against the disaster of the FCM storage backup server itself. However, for this demonstration, I did not configure this replication and will simply copy over the repositories as part of the failover process. Of course, that is only possible if the FCM server on the primary side is still available in that disaster case. When talking about a disaster case in this tutorial, I mean an outage of the VMware environment on the primary or production side. In that disaster, all data stores and virtual machines are unusable or completely gone. Now FCM with remote mirroring could be used to fail over to a secondary site and bring back the virtual machines to the original or an alternate location on the standby VMware environment. The six steps listed here will be demonstrated in detail in this video. The first five steps cover the initial setup and the sixth step shows the actual failover. Now let's take a look at the configuration of FCM on the primary side. I assume that FCM for VMware is already fully installed on the server. Now the TSM for VMware UI is started for the first time. Since there is no valid profile configuration, the configuration with that starts up automatically. By clicking the next button we get to the vCenter credentials panel where we are asked to re-enter the password for the vCenter server. Click next again to get to the GUI domain configuration panel where you can add or remove VMware data centers from the list of FCM managed data centers. For this tutorial, I leave all data centers selected. Click next to select your auxiliary ESX hostname and if necessary, do a manual host mapping. I select SRM ESX01, which is my ESX host on the primary side. By clicking next, I get to the panel to specify my device class. Since we are using XIV storage, I name it XIV and type in the XIV hostname and the administrator credentials. To specify the path of the local XCLI installation, I use the search function and give a starting point for the search. The config wizard will search for the exact location and fill it in automatically. I'm now going to mark the checkbox Create Snapshots on the remote side to enter the information for the XIV storage device on the secondary side. By checking this option, we also specify that all FCM backups triggered on the primary side are replicated to the secondary side. By clicking the Save button, the configuration with that now saves all specified parameters for this device class. Now I'm back on the storage system panel that lists all the device classes that are defined. 
By clicking next, I get to the summary panel, which also is the final panel of the configuration with that. By clicking finish, I'm going to restart all FCM processes and with that finish the configuration of the FCM server on the primary side. Now I'm going to configure FCM on the secondary side. This can be done as part of the failover scenario or with the initial setup of the environment. I highly recommend to already fully configure FCM on both sides to save time in a real disaster case. The easiest way is to reuse the existing FCM profile from the primary side. I use SCP to copy over the profile to the secondary FCM server. Now switch to the console on the secondary server. For the configuration I use the console based configuration with that by starting the setup screen. The FCM repository can be left as default. The FCM hostname is automatically replaced but I choose a new port to avoid port conflicts on the secondary server. Now specify the addresses of the vCenter server on the secondary side as well as an auxiliary ESX host on the secondary side. All other profile parameters can stay the same as they were configured on the FCM on the primary side. Click enter to accept the preset values. Now enter the passwords for the XIV storage device and the vCenter server again. After restarting the FCM processes, the configuration of the secondary FCM server is finished successfully. At this point we are ready to configure the XIV remote relation. I am now starting the XIV storage management UI to do the configuration steps. Notice that both XIVs are connected to each other, illustrated by the green line. Select the XIV on the primary side to create the volume that later is used for the data store. Select a pool and specify a volume name. Once the volume is created, you can map it to the ESX host on the primary side. At this point, we are ready to create the remote mirror relationship. Select mirror volume and then check the checkbox create destination volume to let the XIV create the destination volume automatically on the second XIV. Select the destination pool and the mirror type, in this case synchronous mirroring, and create the mirror. FCM requires that the remote mirror relationship is part of a mirrored consistency group. Therefore, we need to create the consistency group first on the primary side and then create the same consistency group on the secondary XIV. Now we can switch back to the primary XIV and create the mirror for this consistency group. The consistency group must have the same mirror type as a remote relationship. Now 
add the remote relation to the consistency group to finish the XIV configuration. We are now ready to create a data store using the just created XIV volume. I'm using the vSphere client to do that. Select the ESX host you want to use and click on Add Storage. Select the correct LAN from the list. and create the data store. I will now create two new virtual machines that will be backed up and restored later. Select the Just Create a Data Store and create the first virtual machine. Now proceed with the same steps for the second virtual machine. These steps finalize the configuration of the VMware environment on the primary site. At this point, we can use the FCM UI on the primary FCM server to create a backup schedule for the virtual machines we have just created. Type in a name and a description for the backup schedule. Then select the virtual machines you want to protect. Specify the backup settings you want to have for this backup. And now select the XIV device class that we have previously created. Choose to run the backup schedule immediately and finish the wizard. The backup task is started now. Use the recent task panel to monitor the progress of the task. You can use the update button to update the progress bar. Make sure it reaches 100% and the backup finished successfully. Pretend there's a disaster case that destroyed your VMware environment on the primary side and do a failover to the secondary side. Since I've already installed and configured FCM on the secondary side, all I need to do for the failover is to copy over the FCM repository and the Derby VM CLI database from the primary to the secondary side. I will use SCP again to do that. First copy over the VM CLI DB directory in your home TDP VMware, TDP VMware directory. Now switch to the repository directory and copy over the ORI file that represents the latest backup or the entire repository. After everything is copied, 
Switch to the secondary FCM server console and restart the FCM processes. Also make sure you restart the VM CLI service. After that, FCM on the secondary side is ready to do the restore of the virtual machines. Now switch to the XIV storage management GUI to change the direction of the remote mirror relation. Since in my case the primary XIV is still available, I can do that from there and switch routes local and remotely. If your primary XIV is gone, you can switch the direction of the remote mirror locally on the secondary XIV. Now switch to the secondary XIV and select the original target volume of the remote mirror relation. Because we have switched the direction of the remote mirror, this volume is now the master. Now map this volume to the ESX host on the secondary side. Notice that there is a snapshot on this volume that has been replicated from the primary side to the secondary side. We are now ready to import the original data store on the VMware environment on the secondary side. Select the ESX host and import the data store. Select the right LAN and check for the VMFS label that should show the original data store name. It's highly recommended to assign a new signature to that imported data store. Wait for the import operation to finish. Now we are ready to use FCM on the secondary side to restore our original virtual machines. Finally, I log on to the FCM UI on the secondary FCM server to restore the virtual machines to its original location. Click Initiate a Restore and select a restore point for the virtual machine. Then press Restore to bring up the Restore Wizard, where you can change your Restore settings and select a destination for the restored virtual machine. Press Finish to start the restore task. Once it had started, you can use the recent task panel again to monitor the progress of the task. Make sure the task reaches 100%. There might be a warning that the original resource pool was not found. Therefore, the VM has been restored in the default resource pool. With that, we have successfully failed over to the secondary side and restored the VM to its original location. That brings us to the end of this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching it and found it useful. Thanks for watching and see you again in other tutorial videos.